Well, hello and welcome back. Yeah, you know, one video leads to another. Let's hope we can keep on the roll. So this video, I've been intending to make a video of, like this for a while about the kind of accessories that you need to keep your turntable tuned up to optimum efficiency. Every, because of the time of year, climate changes, temperature room variations, things go out of whack a little teeny bit. And this is a precision instrument. The turntables are precision, so the speed, you might have to adjust the speed on it. My, my turntable, I can adjust the speed on it. And so I need a strobe disc. That's how you see the speed and you can adjust the speed on the turntable but with using a strobe disc. Now if you don't have a strobe disc and you just want to check to see how accurate your turntable is actually spinning, you can put an app on your smartphone and you can put the, your phone right on the turntable platter, it'll spin around and it'll tell you what speed it is. But remember now that phone has a significant amount of weight which will affect the speed very small but it did that small stuff is what's important this is what all this video is really about it's the details right that make the difference in analog another thing you're going to need is a stylus force gauge and uh this very simple i think i paid ten dollars off ebay right you just put your needle on that little dot and you set it to grams and then you have the, your tracking force, your vertical tracking force that your, the weight of which your needle is going to be set at. Very important to get it precise. They'll say between this and that. Usually there's a range, but if you do some reading on the forums and such, people will actually let you know what is the ideal weight for that. And you can play a little bit. You can put a little bit heavier, a little bit lighter, but you've got to something that's precise where you can measure that and see okay does it sound a little bit better when it's heavier or does it sound a little bit better when it's a bit lighter okay and the next thing that I use to keep my turntable dialed in is this alignment protractor these the grids on there are for setting your alignment of your cartridge and the straight line that goes across is for setting your VTA you put that on the platter and you try to get your arm straight along that line and then you can go up or down from there and if you're going to install a cartridge for the leads it's nice to have a pair of tweezers to put the leads on you're going to need either a small Phillips screwdriver like this or an allen wrench to secure the bolts and for setting the speed on my turntable I need a small flathead screwdriver and before you start any of those type of jobs, you've got to make sure that your turntable is level. And this small little round level with the bubble with the target in the middle is the best thing that I've ever found to, to do that uh, leveling the turntable. Instead of having two levels or putting the level one way and the other way, you've got the bubble right in the center. And this is only, again, probably under $10. <clears throat> and I bought it off eBay. Another thing that's important when you're doing a turntable is coffee. So, you know, I always have to have a drink of coffee. Helps to clear the throat a little bit. Then, one thing that's really nice to have is a, for your turntable, is either a record weight or a device, a device like this, which is a, it presses down, it holds the record down. So these are little springs on here, some spring steel, some rubber pads. And this is uh, made by Nagoka. I probably bought this in about 84, I think, or something. You just push it down and you turn it and it stays on, the, it holds the record down on the surface. So why is something like that important? Well, sometimes if your record is not perfectly, have a perfectly flat profile, this will straighten it out and flatten it out because the flatter that groove is when you're tracing, the easier it is for that for that stylus to hit both sides of that groove. If your record's off a bit, it's, it's harder to track, but when you've got it nice and flat in the middle, it tracks better. 
Also, it helps with the vibration. When that needle is running through there, there's a lot of vibration that's caused by that needle running through there and it's picking up the vibration off that record. And that noise actually is going, it's got to go somewhere. So the best way is for it to go into the platter and be taken away. And that's why another nice accessory is, is like a platter mat. That helps get the vibration out and skid it out of the record so it doesn't go into the stylus and cause distortion. So now we want to talk about, I guess, your stylus care on your turntable. <clears throat> First thing you're going to need is a little brush. I got this with a cartridge. And you, just a little brush, you could just brush it from the back to the front of your stylus, clean off the lint, little parts of debris. Now, this is a disc washer brush, and this has a camel hair on it, and this is more aggressive. This really pulls harder and cleans better if you've got something stuck on there. And for those, probably every couple of months, it's a good idea to use a wet cleaner because there are some debris that gets stuck on the needle itself and it doesn't come off with a regular brush like this. And so every couple months or so, put some of that fluid on that little brush right there and clean your stylus. Then there's another thing for your records. They get static on them. What's the best way to avoid static? For me, as I clean them, I do a wet cleaning with my spin clean and then I use my Record Doctor 5 to vacuum the records off. I've got a few videos about how to clean records. And once your records are clean and if you clean them in that fashion, there'll be no static on the record anymore. But if you put it back in that paper sleeve, when you pull the record in and out of that paper, it puts a lot of static on your record. And it also scratches the records. Because the records they've got today, the, the vinyl formulations, they're not as resilient as they were back in the day. Sliding in on that paper will get fine, fine, fine surface scratches. Most of the time they're not audible, but I tell you what, when you put the, the record up under the bright light and you look at it and it's full of fine hairline scratches, you can avoid that by using a nice inner sleeve like this. It keeps the static off your records and it doesn't scratch them. And I bought these from, uh, I think it was Music Direct or uh, Acoustic Sounds, you know, quality records. You can buy these in bulk and they're really, they're pretty cheap. But Sleeve City has some uh, inner sleeves and outer sleeves. I think that Sleeve City makes the best ones. And they're all about the same price. But the quality records inner sleeves, you can buy bulk and get a really good deal on them. You know, you can buy 250, 500 at a time. And so you can keep the drawer full of them, right? I got this drawer is for my outer sleeves and this one is for the inner sleeves. So when I get a new record, boom, I'm right there. I got stuff handy. So another way to keep the static off your records, if you get a record that's got some static on it, there's something called a zero stat. Now I bought this zero stat, I think about 73. It still works. But I'll tell you what, these are pretty expensive nowadays. Something that works just as good or better is one of these carbon fiber brushes. And this has, this part out here is, is made out of steel, okay? So when you're cleaning your record, when you go across and you touch your spindle to this metal part, it takes all the static. It, it, the carbon fiber can, will conduct static electricity and it will put it into this metal piece up here and when you touch your spindle you ground it and it discharges the static works really good for getting static off your records never mind a little bit of might be up maybe once in a while maybe you left your record on your turntable overnight and it's got some dust on it so you can use this to get it off and one thing i don't recommend people use for cleaning their styluses is this gel stylus cleaner this stuff will stick to your stylus and is very difficult to get off. And it will actually damage your records if you don't get it cleaned off. But you can hear it. It will give you some audible mistracking, like 
hey, there's something, it feels, sounds like there's maybe lint on my needle or something on there, but you can't get it off. And the only way you can get it off is really repeatedly using something, a wet cleaner like this, and it'll eventually come off. So how do we use some of these items here? Well, let's have a little close-up of the turntable and I can demonstrate a few of the, how we do some of these items. Okay, for now we have that little round bubble level here. And you can see, if I zoom in on there a little bit, how the bubble is right in the center. It's hard to get the camera right over top of it to see because then the lighting is affected. So, But you can see that I've got it right in the center. Okay, the next thing I'm going to demonstrate is how to use that carbon fiber brush. Now the brush has got brushes on two sides of it, the inside and the outside. What you do is you hold the brush on the inside of the, and then as you bring it forward, take it to the back and pull it off. That cleans, it off, cleans off the dirt. You go on the front side, then you bring it to the back and pull it off. That cleans off your dirt of your record. Then to get rid of the static, you come over and you touch the center and that discharges the static. Like that. That will discharge the static off your record. And you do it about three or four times. And you'll hear, as you do it, you'll have progressively less static on the record as you do that process. Now the next thing we're going to do is I'll put the record clamp on. It just pushes down on there and then you turn it and it holds the record down. This is the type I have. I don't like the real big heavy weights because they add a lot of weight to your to your platter and the motor is going to have to work harder to overcome all that mass. But if you've got a real big motor and a big platter and it's not going to add that much and it'll actually create more inertia. But for me, I'm just going to be sticking with the type that use the springs to hold the record down. Now for cleaning your stylus, I like to turn my stereo on because I like to hear what I'm doing as well as I like to see what I'm doing. And you go to the back and you bring it forward. And a couple of brushes like that is all you need. And that'll clean your stylus off. Now if you want to check the height of your arm, you need to get a gauge like this. And you see that line that's going across the middle? You put that on, you lower the tone arm to the record surface there. And then you put the, the gauge in behind it like this. And then you look at it, and that line should be almost straight across, or you can tell if it's a little bit down in the back, or if it's down in the front. Now to adjust the vertical tracking force, or to set the cartridge, can't you know, the, the stylus force, you lower your tone arm onto the little dot that's on the center of this gauge right here, this digital force gauge, and then you have to move then the back, you have to move the counterweight forward or back. If you move the counterweight back it's going to get lighter. If you move it forward it gets heavier. And mine has an Allen wrench here and when you're going to adjust that, of course you have to lift the arm up, bring it back over to the stand, lock it in place, and then you adjust make your adjustment on there. Now this doesn't have any type of a scale or anything on here. You just have to move it back a little bit, back and forth, and, you know, you just have to, but some of them have a, a counterweight on the back and the front has a little scale, so it's easier to, to dial it in. But you still, you can't go by that, that gauge on the front. You really need to fine tune it with a, a gauge like this. 
Now to set the alignment of your cartridge, you put the alignment protractor on there and you have there's a little dot right in the middle and you can see I'm not sure how good the focus is but that stylus is right on that line and you can see it's got A and B once you get it on A where it's at now you move it over to the B and you square it up there too there's another thing that comes in handy when you're trying to see all those lines little magnifying glass comes in handy Okay, well I guess we've covered about all the little uh, accessories that I own for my turntable and how I keep it tuned up. Now, once you've got your um, alignment set, you don't have to go and, and check it all the time, but Sometimes I will go and I'll check the height of my arm occasionally just to see where that's at. And that is pretty well when you get your arm, it's level with that line. Most of the time I found you go a little bit down in the back. And that'll help you get, so if you want to go down, keep going down to, okay. And what you'll notice is the voice too. In your in your sound stage, the voice will go up and down according to that VTA. If you bring it up, the voice goes up and it goes down. So try to get the voice where you think if that person was standing in front of you, where their mouth or their head would be, and get it centered in there. That's one of the things I, I listen for. And you'll notice when you you're going up a little bit and down, all of a sudden everything kind of just snaps into focus, and it really all comes together. That's when you're basically got the, this, the magic happening. And that's what you're looking for. Um, the VTA, VTF type thing. So, you know, we've covered all the bases on uh, how we take care of our records and keep them clean and keep the static off of them and keep that stylus clean and get your tracking force dialed in and get the VTA dialed in and the alignment and all that. And we've got all the tools you need. It's not very hard to do. And thanks for watching. And bye for now.